Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, hope you've all been doing well. This will be a pretty straightforward video where we'll be taking a look at some 1440p gaming benchmarks, which were done on the new Ryzen 9 3900X and my old Ryzen 7 1800X. Previously, I posted my review and some 1080p benchmarks of the 3900X which showcased performance at a lower resolution. So if you haven't already done so and if you're interested, I definitely recommend checking them out. Quad HD or 2560 by 1440 is a much more common resolution now with monitors that are using panels at this resolution becoming cheaper and gamers looking for a nice visual fidelity bump from 1080p without taking a huge performance hit are becoming more common. 4K still remains to be out of reach for most consumers as the hardware needed is just too expensive. So this was requested by quite a lot of viewers of the channel. But before we get into the benchmarks, we'll be going over some hardware specs. The Ryzen 9 3900X has PBO enabled plus auto OC, while the Ryzen 7 1800X has a 4GHz all-core overclock applied to it. Both CPUs are cooled by a Noctua NHD15, and they both also have 16GB of G-Skill Triton Z memory paired with them with tune timings. However, the 3900X has its memory running at 3600MHz, and the 1800X is running at 3333MHz. As I'm also trying to showcase the differences between the two platforms, one that allows for higher memory speeds. The 3900X was tested on the X570 Aorus Master motherboard, and the 1800X was tested on the Aorus AX375 Gaming 5 motherboard. As for the graphics card, I am using an EVGA GTX 1080 Ti SC Black Edition with a plus 100MHz offset to the core and plus 300MHz offset to the memory, which gives it a nice little performance bump. As for the rest of the specifications, you guys can check the video description down below. Moving on to the benchmarks, the first title on our list is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, running on DirectX 12. For the settings, I decide to use the high preset for all the games as I find the ultra quality presets or cranking everything to the max ends up causing more of a performance regression than how much visual fidelity is increased, which doesn't really make it justifiable. Also, post-processing effects like motion blur were turned off, along with any sort of FPS caps like VSync for obvious reasons. When looking at the results here, you guys can see that there's really no notable changes in performance. There is a 10% increase to the 0.1% lows, but other than that, the experience here should be pretty similar on both processors. Far Cry 5 is next, and here we're looking at a similar story as we did with Tomb Raider. The difference between the average frame rates here is only just 6%, but the frame time results are better on the 3900X by quite the margin. Here we're looking at an increase of around 12% and 44% for the 1% and 0.1% lows respectively. Therefore, even though the average frame rate implies similar gaming performance, with higher minimums you will be able to experience smoother gameplay on the 3900X. Grand Theft Auto 5 is one of those titles where even at a higher resolution, the CPU will still play a major role, as that generally tends to be the case with open world titles such as this one, and along with the fact that it is quite a bit older than the rest of the titles. Here the 3900X shows a major uplift for the average frame rate, an increase of 35%. The minimums are also quite a bit better on the 3900X, where the 1% and 0.1% lows are 26% and 20% higher respectively. This is probably due to the much larger cache and significant increase in single core performance that the 3900X has over the 1800X. Moving on, the next game we'll be taking a look at on our list is Middle Earth Shadow of War. Here you guys can see that the average frame rate is just slightly higher on the 3900X while the 1% frame time results are pretty much within margin of error. Meanwhile, it's the 0.1% lows which have improved quite dramatically once again. An increase of 22% can be noted here. You'll often find this to be the case where even though the average frame rate may not improve as much, at these higher resolutions the minimums can still show significant improvements to result in smoother and consistent gameplay. Assassin's Creed Odyssey shows similar behavior to what we saw from GTA 5. Across all three measured stats, we're looking at an improvement. The difference from the average frame rate here is 23%, while the frame time results are also showing similar margins. 30% and 25% is what was noted for the 1% and 0.1% lows respectively. Battlefield is one of those titles that shows no major differences for the average frame rates, along with the 1% lows. However, there is a pretty big difference when comparing the 0.1% low results, where the 3900X has a 36 FPS lead or an improvement of around 44%. For Honor and Ghost Recon Wildlands are the next two titles on the list, and from these results we can see at 1440p, the game really only cares about the GPU. For the average frame rate, along with the 1% and 0.1% lows, we're looking at pretty much margin of error stuff here. So regardless of whichever CPU you're using, at 1440p the experience will be identical for these two titles. 
Next up, we'll be taking a look at a couple of racing games. First up is F1 2018, and in this title our minimums are pretty much within margin of error when comparing the two CPUs. However, the average frame rate is quite a bit higher on the 3900X. Here we're looking at a difference of around 7%, but with the average frame rates this high, it's not something you'd really even notice. The last game on our list is Forza Horizon 4, and here the 3900X offers performance that's slightly ahead of the 1800X when looking at the average FPS and 1% low results, but the 0.1% low results are significantly better on the 3900X, an improvement of around 36%. Now that we've gone through all the titles, we can look at our 10 game averages. For the average frame rate when comparing the two CPUs, we're seeing a difference of 9 frames per second or 7%. Meanwhile, our 1% and 0.1% lows show greater margins. Here the differences can be noted at 10% and 19% respectively. At 1440p, these results are pretty much what I'd expect. Where at this resolution, most of the bottleneck will be from the GPU, but a few titles still did show some considerable differences with a faster GPU, mostly open world titles. At 1080p, we saw much greater improvement in regards to all three measured stats. Now at 1440p, even though there is a difference, it's really nothing to write home about. At this resolution, you can expect a similar experience between the two CPUs. But this does beg the question, what will happen in the future when more faster GPUs come out? Will we start to see performance differences as we did with 1080p? Although that's assuming that games that come out in the future are optimized in the same way, and the extra cores these CPUs have aren't leveraged. Hopefully with the new consoles using these Zen-based CPUs, we see developers leveraging the extra CPU horsepower, since the CPUs still have a lot of headroom left. In a lot of games, I notice many cores are sitting around doing nothing, while there's one main primary thread that will offload some work to three or four other cores. It'll be interesting to see what happens, and I do look forward to it. Well guys, I hope you found this video to be informative and entertaining. Leave your comments down below. Check out the video description for my other videos and ways to support the channel. And if you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.